It is the year 2472, and the Earth has suffered a great calamity. Hundreds of years of popular culture have vanished. Without the sacred films and texts for guidance, civilization is devoid of anything cool. Then, three incubation chambers are unearthed. And from within, men from the time of the great blockbusters emerge. Now, through highly interesting conversations, they share invaluable insight about what once was. The movies, the shows, the comics, toys, and books. This is... The Hyperspace. Podcasting in the 25th century. Welcome in, podcast pioneers, <laughs> to the hyperspace. I don't know if I'm Dracula or a drunk Russian person. Yeah, I don't know what that is. <laughs> but I'm going to keep going. <laughs> Podcasting in the 25th century. The interweb's first and still only podcast. Sound like Tim Curry in Congo. Listen, hush. My name is Jared. It, my name's Matt. And guess what? What? My, well, Mike... Once again, had the tube trots this week. <laughs> he got a hold of some bad Halloween candy. So, well, you know, it's funny. It, speaking of bad Halloween candy, by the way, happy Halloween, everybody. Yeah. This is Halloween that we're releasing this You're episode. You're listening to this episode on Halloween as it's dropped. And, um, you know, if, if you have been a avid listener of our podcast, then you would know that Mike smuggled into the 25th century. One of the few things he smuggled was chocolate and caused havoc. Havoc yeah. a couple Halloweens ago. He did. There was, I mean, it was uh, almost the equivalent of a COVID lockdown. Yeah, because it, it was a mess. He, he made everybody sick with the uh, the Twix and the sorted Snickers that he brought from the 21st century. But well, I'll tell you the pro- I'll tell you the problem though. I mean, we've made some progress, right? I mean, look, part of the reason why we're here in the 25th century is to help educate and bring back everything that was cool from our youth and educate these poor drones of of citizens. <clears throat> Halloween has kind of taken off, okay? But we have discovered that Halloween candy, specifically chocolate, is kind of like alcohol to these people in the future. They eat just a little bit, and they become a mess. Yes. A mess. They become so inebriatedly, like, disabled. Like, look at this. These people, these are not zombies. These are just regular people that went to a party with me last the, night. The people- and this is... Yes, behind you. They're literally hung over from chocolate. They're not. This this is like what happens when they eat chocolate. Poor people. It's well, bad. you know, we through the use of modern technology, we have for a limited time brought one of our friends from the past into the future with us to spend uh, to spend this time together. And Activate we have, that portal, man. Yeah, we we've we've brought him forward in time, and we have with us tonight. Brian, the collector, is with us this evening. Welcome, Brian. Hey, guys. Brian, how's it going, man? I brought some candy. Nice. Whoa, whoa, whoa. whoa, whoa. Okay. You Contraband. Want, you want chocolate or Listen. nerds or what do you want? All <laughs> uh, kinds of Halloween candy. Ner- okay, nerds might be safe, but chocolate in the 25th century is no good. Okay. You, so. you don't want to mix chocolate in with their Nutria paste? <laughs> That could be a whole different ball of wax there. I mean, we okay. we might be able to... We actually might be able to market a hallucinogen to these people. Some sort of opioid <laughs> that is chocolate and nutrient paste. We could be like the uh, Walter Whites of the 25th century. And, and, and by the way, guys, I have to interrupt. It is... I have to tell the listeners at home, and if you're watching this right now, Brian and Jared are lifelong friends. And... There are a heat just Brian just shared with us on our chain that we have some amazing pictures of Jared and himself in Halloween. And what year do you think that was, guys? Oh man, that was probably what 79, 80, early 80s, probably. Yeah, that is crazy. And you know, that's that's what we want to talk about today is Halloween has really, really changed a lot. I mean, compared to when we were kids. Because I was born in 1975. Jared, you were born in 1975. Brian, are you from 1975? 
I'm from 1974. Wow, oh, man, ancient. I know. Uh, <laughs> but the uh, so we've all we all grew up around the same era of Halloween. We all we all had yes. the same experiences just in different places. And that's what we want to kind of talk about tonight is is what was Halloween like when we were kids compared to like what is it like now? Because we all have kids. And how has it changed? You know, what what did we go through? What do we experience and, and what are we seeing our kids doing now? It's just it's a it's a different world, man. Uh, I think one of the biggest changes that I've seen over the years are costumes. Mm. I mean, costumes now are super elaborate. They might as well be cosplayers, right? I mean, all these kids sure. walking around yeah. and they're they're pretty creative with the makeup and just and then the costumes themselves compared to the uh you know, 1980 Darth Vader vinyl costume. And they, they, plastic. They would come, they the square box. Okay. So the, guys, clear I'm, plastic. So, I'm so yeah. glad. I'm so glad Vacuum you brought formed, this up. Mask. I'm so glad you brought this up. So <laughs> yeah. you guys may or may not know this, all right? But there was a company called Ben Cooper Incorporated. Okay. You know yeah. this, don't you? I can say Ben Cooper Incorporated. This company, if you're not familiar with this, uh, listening at home, this company was started by a guy in the uh, the 1920s who was really, really into theater. He was in uh, Manhattan, and he was designing costumes for the theater. And the Great Depression hit, and the theater went to crap. And obviously, nobody's going to the theater anymore. So he pivoted his business and got the first license from Walt Disney to make Halloween costumes. And in the 1930s, started producing those first plastic masks with that vinyl apron and yeah. uh and ben cooper incorporated if you grew up in the 60s 70s 80s guaranteed you wore a costume from ben cooper incorporated they had the star wars license they had the uh, dc license they had all the big licenses to make yep. all those like the batman the c3po and darth vader all those costumes and they were successful all the way up until like I don't know the 1990s, and they unfortunately, you know, went kaput. But uh, it was just fascinating what kind of like American history this Ben Cooper Incorporated became because everybody wore one of these costumes growing up. Yes, and um, I sent the group a picture of me in my Darth Vader Ben Cooper costume. Yes, I had that same exact costume as well um, growing up. I, I wore it one year and uh it's funny how they would of course when we were young uh the safety uh was was starting to be more of a uh it, it was it was becoming more important to um makers of the costumes that we wore and so the costumes from ben cooper especially they weren't necessarily authentic to the character you wanted <laughs> like darth vader of course the darth vader costume was had a black cape and the apron was black but it also had uh actually a picture of darth vader uh <laughs> smashing out of this bright orange explosion so you would be able to see this costume right. at night and i think very helpfully uh, the costume actually had a picture of Darth Vader on it, and it said Darth Vader. So there was <laughs> driving no, it home. <laughs> yeah, there's like there's no question about who I am supposed to be right now. But I remember specifically around you know the fall of every year, you know, uh, like Kmart and Target would start filling up with just shelves and shelves of these you know, these small rectangular boxes full yeah. of characters. And it was like, and that's, that's literally for most of my childhood. That's how I picked what I was going to be for Halloween. I, I, there was no creativity whatsoever. I mean, no. if, if, if that's, if Ben Cooper said spider, that's the Spider-Man <laughs> costume. That's what Spider-Man was. That was it. I had yep. the Hulk. This yes. ridiculous looking oh, yeah. Hulk face. With yeah, the, the whole the green muscle uh, vinyl yes. apron. I the ones I remember having were the Hulk, Darth Vader, mm -hmm. Spider Man, and Bo Duke. 
Bo Duke, <laughs> which I believe, I believe, I'm not as 100% sure, but I believe Bo had a big, uh, prominent Confederate flag on his chest, <laughs> which would not play today. But um, back, I'm trying to find a picture. He was of just one Bo- of them good old boys. Never <laughs> made no harm. I, I'm trying to find a picture of the Bo Duke. Uh, big oh, costume. my. But um, I, I had Yoda and Vader. Oh, oh Yoda. And and my now, sister had strawberry shortcake. I had C-3PO. And I okay. I don't think that was a, a good choice, to be honest. Oh, 3PO? That what? was him. I mean, that's I mean, probably authentic that's looking. Probably closer to v- <laughs> than Vader yeah, is. You're probably right. You're probably right. It wasn't the coolest, but uh they were, you know what though, but everybody wore these plastic masks. You couldn't really see out of no. them. Uh and, you couldn't and talk, the, and the breath would start. Oh, get, uh, it, it would just be it's like a, full of moisture. You might as well just be walking through, like, you know, the deepest part of Brazil by the end of the night yeah. in the rainforest. I used, to, I used to pray it would be cold on Thanksgiving or on Halloween because oh. you would fry in these costumes. Yeah. They were they oh. were not they didn't breathe. I mean, you're wearing vinyl. I mean, yeah, the, yeah the those things costume, were hotter in Hades. Yes, it was just a lot. But I, that's one thing I remember is that that is, that's just how we picked out what we were going to be. Our parents would take yep. us to the store and say, okay, pick out your costume. There was no thought other than to pick out the character you wanted. You know, there was no, I mean, uh, bless him, like our friend Charlie, uh, you know, he, he would probably 3D print a uh, screen accurate C-3PO <laughs> costume. <laughs> But uh, I mean, back then, something like that was so far from from my mind. Yeah. I mean, I didn't even want to make my own costume. I wanted to buy it. Well, the best part is, is that I, you were okay in this because <laughs> that's uh, to your point. That's all you had to choose from. So if you were Darth Vader, you were Darth Vader for Halloween. I mean, that was as sure. good as it got for a yeah. five year old kid. That was as good as it got. There was nobody wearing a screen accurate Darth Vader costume in 1982. That was trick or treating, but I will tell you in 1983, (laughs) I got my first full rubberized pullover mask. Oh yes, which is like a lizard kind of thing, and I got to wear it to school, and I was, I was king of the king of everything because everyone came in with their Ben Cooper plastic, you know, uh, face face plates, and you had the full over the head. Which unfortunately, I mean, if you can't breathe in a plastic mask you you were it was impossible to breathe (laughs) in more than 10 minutes in a rubber mask but true but that was the like 19 the mid 80s is when it started to kind of shift a little but i tell you the 70s and like first years of the 80s was like the heyday of ben cooper because it had all the great characters that you could choose from it was everything and and now if if you had a lot of ben cooper mint in package you'd be pretty wealthy i'm sure because (laughs) those things are worth a pretty penny these days so uh, jared since we go way back yes <laughs> there used to be a i'm pretty sure you were involved in this this uh family that we went to church with had a halloween party every year the yes. rose the rose yes uh, there i think one of them was named jamie yeah jamie and hobby that's it actually my parents still talk to them i <laughs> as, i mind do too occasionally yeah so well, we would go over there. They'd have this Halloween party every year. And of course, we'd go rocking our Ben Cooper costumes. <laughs> and of course, the parents were voting on best costume. Guess who never won best costume? The Ben Coopers of the world. <laughs> the Ben Coopers did not win. That's not fair. The there's costume. Not, there's contest. no choices. And you walk Wait. in thinking, oh, I'm going to win because I got this cool Darth Vader <laughs> costume on. <laughs> And no, and there's like five others no with, wearing the same Darth Vader costume. Well, and well, and I think the people throwing this party, their kids, um, they always, you know, they were the creative people who were making their own costumes and, you know, not just buying them off the Absolutely. shelf. Absolutely. Yeah, but your and, mom wasn't making you a costume. She was buying you Ben Cooper right off the shelf. No, that's <laughs> you true. didn't stand a chance. But that's why didn't we didn't stand win a chance. Ever. Man, gosh, I haven't thought about the the rose in forever. <laughs> good grief so that was and, one of the first things i thought of so when, yeah uh, so you guys obviously grew up in tennessee as kids trick-or-treating i was most yes. of my days i was in florida as a kid 
And uh, but what was it like? Let's let's talk about let's let's educate the current young listeners of the world. What was it like to go trick or treating in the late seventies and early eighties? Well, for me, well, actually, me and Brian, we, we didn't we didn't live really close together. When and we we grew up both grew up in Knoxville, Tennessee, but um, we lived quite some miles from each other. So, you know, I don't think there was ever a time on Halloween night where we went trick or treating together. Okay, me and, uh, me and Brian, um, we would it would usually be. Um, some uh other kids in the neighborhood and um our parents like usually the dads would go out with us and uh, we just kind of go around the block in my neighborhood you know we and back in those days there was really no i mean these days you know it's like the porch lights off don't even step on my driveway because you ain't getting nothing but back in those days pretty much everybody participated uh, at least in my neighborhood, they did. Um, and uh, so there was never a question of, oh, well, their lights are off, so let's not go there. Um, even if their lights were off, we'd go and we'd still get candy. So, right. um, but we were usually out for maybe about an hour, you know, and then we'd come back. And this is something we can talk about later, of course. But um, there was the, the, of course, the scare in the 80s that people were putting razor blades and <laughs> nails yeah, and, that's right. And candy yeah. bars. I remember that. Stuff. I remember, of course. Um, but uh, and they're always like, okay, first of all, put all your candy out on the floor and check it for punctures. And that was a bunch of bull crap. I only uh, lost two friends that oh. way. It wasn't like a yeah. big <laughs> epidemic. <laughs> yeah. Of course. Um, so but for my neighborhood, it was pretty standard. Uh, and we were would remember uh we'd remember year to year, you know, the places that had the good stuff. Oh yeah. And, um, they didn't change from year to year. I mean, if it was good stuff, it was good stuff. You know, that's, and, that's the, that's the real quick. That's the catch 22 of Halloween. Isn't it? When you're like an adult, like you want to be the cool house that gives out the big candy bars, but yeah. then you always have to be the house that gives out big candy bars. Sure. Because you, once you, once you go, you can't come back. Oh, there's no turning back from that. Yeah, like and you, every like year you, you go know, all your, in and you're your in candy budget doubles around That's this it. time of year, which is makes me angry, but whatever. <laughs> Terry takes care of all that stuff. But, um, yeah. So, I mean, mine was pretty standard. Uh, there was certain houses that played, you know, scary music and stuff. We always thought that was cool. And I would remember, uh, my sister and her friends would always be afraid to approach those houses because of the scary stuff. Yeah. Uh, but, um, it didn't deter me at all. You know, you just, I, I know I've told this story before, but it's perfect time to tell it again. So when I was, um, I must've been about 10 years old. So we had a lot of He-Man figures growing up and I had Castle Skull, and my brother had Snake Mountain, my twin brother, <laughs> and he always wanted <laughs> Castle Skull. But anyway, Snake Mountain had this, uh, voice modulator. Like you take it off, it's shaped like a wolf head and you make your voice sound all like hollow and, and somewhat demonic. And uh, my father would take this and in Halloween, he would, he would take the, the it was just, it was just a, a microphone connected to like a, a speaker, you know, and you could take the whole thing out, the whole mechanism out of Snake Mountain. And he would take it and he would put it in the bushes and feed it like the four feet of wire that it had. He feed it into like the nearest window screen and just sit by the wall like this and wait for the smallest kids to walk up to our house. And then he'd be like, <laughs> and if that kid shit his pants, it made my dad's night. And my dad was as happy as can be. And that was like, I've never seen my father. I don't think I've ever seen him so happy in my life as he did. Scaring he children, scaring little kids with the snake mountain yes. microphone modulator. It was very funny. Well, but, uh, Brian, what was it like in your neighborhood? Because, you know, I, I, I want to tell people, <laughs> Brian, actually, he bought the house that he grew up in. And it's, um, he, he lives in, so, I mean, basically, your trick-or-treat experience has has almost gone uninterrupted and unchanged for uh, over 40 years. <laughs> Pretty much. So, um <laughs> I sent a picture to you guys, the one of the being a ghost, a sheet as, yes. a, as a ghost. That was the first Halloween that 
that I remember um, trick or treating in this neighborhood, which was that was 1977. Okay, so um, I was three, and um, in my neighborhood, you could, you know, my streets probably you know three tenths of a mile long or something. It's you know decent little walk, and that's kind of when I was that age. That's what I would do is I would my parents would take me out and I'd walk down the street. Now, as I got older, my, my neighborhood's a little more vast than that. There, it, there's this whole section up above. It, you have to go up the hill and then there's tons of houses and we would go up there. And I mean, I would have my little either pumpkin bucket or whatever bag I was taking would be so heavy. I'd be almost dragging it home. It was so full of candy. I mean, it was ridiculous how much candy I collected on Halloween when I became probably, you know, nine or 10. (laughs) I mean, it was an unbelievable amount of candy. Who needs the big bars when you have all the stuff that I had in that bag? I mean, it was literally like 10 pounds of candy. It's amazing. Oh, it was crazy. But, um, you know, I remember my last Halloween that I actually went trick or treating in this neighborhood. I went with my friend, Aaron and, um, (laughs) We had had problems the year before with high schoolers. We were in middle school and uh, with high schoolers chasing us around and stuff. So Aaron's a bit of a prankster. And he decided that he would uh, carry eggs, toilet paper, and bottle rockets. (laughs) And so we're up in the neighborhood and you see these high schoolers kind of approaching and they're kind of looking like they're going to do something. And Aaron whips out the bottle rockets and starts <laughs> firing at them those guys and man you talk about some guys just running for their <laughs> lives those guys are running away screaming and did not mess with us the rest of the night let me ask you a question were your parents with you no exactly <laughs> now this is a this this might be a tough thing to to wrap your brain around but when we were kids especially like once you hit like around like seven or eight years old there were no parents they let you out yes and it was and no one ever at least in my name in where i was nobody ever trick-or-treated when it was light out you always went out when it was dark but you had to wait you had to wait wait. there was no daytime trick-or-treating you went out in the dark and your parents said have fun and you you went for like a good hour two hours and you came back uh with a giant sack of of candy and And you you also Oh, sorry. Go ahead. No, no. In my in in Florida, where I was, I was in a subdivision which only had like the entrance at the front of the neighborhood, with like, my God, there was a hundred homes in it. So you couldn't even get to all the homes. So you went to as many homes as you could, and you went out with like your group in the dark, no parents, to homes, and some you knew, and some you didn't, and some jackass would give you ice cubes. Like, who gives you ice cubes (laughs) for Halloween? What? But um, but you're with your group and then you'd run into like another group. And the, like much like Brian said, they would bring news from the top of the neighborhood. Say, don't go up there. The middle schoolers are stealing candy. So, you know, you, then you you start to like watch over your shoulder. But like back then in 1982, nobody was watching over you. You were on your own. You're with your friends. You had the candy, you had the bullies and you had the the creatures of the night. For Halloween. Yeah. And, but here's the thing back then, if you're, if you know, you were in good standing with your parents, they, and you ha- knew your boundaries, yes. you knew where you could go, where you could not go, and you follow those rules. Uh, exactly. And I don't yes. think that's the case anymore. But, and now it's funny because you kind of cut off trick or treating when you were in, you know, late middle school, it seemed like. Yeah. And, you um, made the transition to growing giving out up. Candy. But now there are more and more high schoolers out there. I, I've seen it. I've, I've taken my high schoolers out and, you know, when they were in high school and I've got one in there right now, I'm sure she's going to want to go next week and, or today. <laughs> and, uh, you know, we actually, my dad lives in this, or used to live in this neighborhood that was pretty good size, big houses, you know, good candy. So we take our kids over there and my neighborhood, I've had like two trick or treaters in the last five years Oh in, wow! in my house and nobody shows up at my, nobody wants to climb my hill. 
nobody wants to go up my driveway or my front yard. Yeah. It's not that bad, but they look at it and they're like, uh, no, we're not doing that. So, oh yeah. The juice isn't worth the squeeze here. Yeah. So <laughs> I just turn off my lights every now and then I might have a jack-o'-lantern out front, but I go down and chill in the man cave or I'm out taking the kids trick-or-treating in my dad's old neighborhood Yeah, where the, uh, the pickings are plentiful. You know, it's funny you say that about the older, older crew coming in now. When I where I moved from before I moved to New York, uh, my neighborhood in Florida, you know, once, uh, you know, the it was a bit it was a pretty good sized neighborhood and we had a great amount of traffic for kids like the kids. There's a lot of kids in the neighborhood and it was a lot of fun and you'd have a good two hours of kids. But I got to tell you, once once it hit like nine o'clock when kids were not coming by anymore. An interesting phenomenon would happen. People from outside the neighborhood would come in and I'm not talking about kids. We're talking about like. 20 like young 20s adults oh, adults wow. not even dressed up coming to your door with a sack yeah like a pillowcase yeah and so. they weren't even dressed up it'd be like sometimes they'd have like like their kids with them but they were the ones trick-or-treating it's very bizarre and, and it's like i never saw this when i was a kid like it just didn't exist no i was so i mean no, i'm not saying that that things have changed so much but i think as a kid, Halloween might have been a little more adventurous and special than it is now for kids. You know, it's much more chaperoned. It's much more like a compartmentalized, like towns will tell you now trick or treat on this day instead of Halloween. And yeah. we expect you to trick or treat on this day like that never existed when I was a kid. No, Halloween yeah. was on Halloween. And that's when you trick or treated. And you have so you have a lot of places You'll you'll see this at some churches, uh, like trunk or treat. They'll I'm do. doing that tomorrow night. A trunk. Or oh, treat. Okay. Well, and and or that's not it. on Halloween. No, no, it's not. Well, <laughs> but um, and, but you'll see like places uh, around here, like one of the malls. You know, they'll trick or treat, and it it seems to me uh, n- that stuff never really appealed to me because it just seemed like confined. Yes, and like like almost prepackaged and safe. It's like, man, no, you, you don't go to around to a bunch of people's cars that, you know, and you don't go to a mall, yeah. you go outside in the dark, oh, yes. to your neighborhood, to people you see once a year when you trick or treat at their house. That's right. And that's, that to me is that that's trick or treating. And fortunately in my neighborhood, where I live now or where I lived in the 21st century. Um, we get, we probably get a hundred kids a year. That's a lot. Yeah. Uh, there's, there's a there. And they usually come there. There's a lot of them in packs, you know, they'll, they'll go in these giant hordes of, of kids. We'll have a group of 10 or 15 and then we'll have some stragglers. And then another big group will come through. Right. And, uh, me and Terry usually will be setting, uh, we don't, we don't, we don't let them knock on the door. We're sitting on the front porch with the bowl. We're, we're waiting for them. Cause that's one of the things we like to do is just sit out there and look. And plus, you know, my, my idiot dog would not allow that anyway. So oh my God. <laughs> if every time somebody knocked on the door, they think that the wolf man was in there trying to kill them. So, uh, but yeah, that's what we do. And, you know, Terry over the past few years has really gotten, she's, you know, she's all about the inflatables. So (laughs) we've got all these inflatable, (laughs) like Jack Skellington and an R2 D2 on a jack-o'-lantern and, uh, you know, all these other things. I want to get a stay puff marshmallow man this year. How about that giant home Depot skeleton that's out this year? Yeah. Yeah. It's like, man, that is everywhere. I took a picture of one in my neighbor's yard. I mean, that, is that the one you sent? Yeah. They, they put their skeletons out and they like switch up every few days or something, their poses and things, but man, that's just kind of crazy. But that's uh, for me, that's, that's fun. That's kind of how I enjoy Halloween these days is, you know, Terry likes to decorate everything really early. And then this year uh, we bought uh, an inflatable outdoor screen and I'm going to be projecting old universal monster movies oh, nice. on onto the screen um for trick-or-treaters this year that's cool. and, and i've already tested it and 
it's it's a lot bigger than I thought it was, and it's going to be really cool. And we got a fog machine. We got the whole shot, and um, and we of course we have the the soundtrack of scary music always playing. And uh, but for for us around here, I mean that's and my daughter, uh, she's fifteen, and she she's she skipped a couple of years, but apparently is planning to go this year. Or some of her friends are coming over, and they're going to go out and. Um, she's going to dress up like Jennifer Connelly from Labyrinth in that, oh, in that big ball gown dress. <laughs> she has one. <laughs> wow. Uh, so she's going to do that. And, um, you know, and it's going to be one of those things where, of course, me and Terry, I used to, of course, go with her when she was little. Uh, but, um, the last time she went, uh, she was, she was with a bunch of friends and I didn't go, but, um, you know. I'm at that point. She's 15. You know, she's probably pushing it whether she should be trick or treating, but you know, I figure what the heck it's harmless fun. 15, you know, you're talking, you know, a couple year, two years, maybe in high school. Uh, I think I went out with my friends to do Halloween stuff. I don't think necessarily trick or treating. We probably just wound up going playing spin the bottle or something like that, but I'm not sure. I'm sure she won't be doing that, but, uh, but that, I think that's what we were doing at around 15 and Halloween. Just an okay. excuse to get out. To get out in a way. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but we certainly weren't going house to house trick-or-treating asking for candy. If Well, so Matt, let me ask you. Sure. I know you have three very young kids. Yes. What what did, what do you guys do? Well, I mean, when we were still in Florida, my son was uh, about four. And uh, my daughter was very young. And then the other one was a baby. Uh, and so we had that neighborhood we lived in was great because we could go house to house and he'd get just like a sack full of candy. But where I live now, it's very quiet. And in fact, if I get one trick or treater, it's amazing. It's like wow. nobody comes down my street. So wow. we take them to like other neighborhoods where like friends of ours have like live in like a bigger development and they go and do that. So that's kind of like what we do here. And it's a shame because like I love Halloween. I like setting up the front and trying to like get it all spooky and fun for kids. And I like busted my hump doing this like last year to make it like amazing. And nobody came. So, so, I mean, it's like, I have, I have ambitions of like what I'd like to do around here, but you know, (laughs) the, it's just not easy. You have to be in the right kind of neighborhood to really experience. Like as a kid, this is not the ideal neighborhood for to trick or treat in by any means where I'm living. So it's a, I think as a kid, I was, I was really lucky to be in a neighborhood that was perfect for trick or treating. Like it was 150, 200 homes that just like, you couldn't make them all. You couldn't get to all the homes if you tried, but where I live now is somewhat remote and it's just not happening is for trick or treat. So we got to take them places to do it. And that's part of the reason like tomorrow night we're doing a trunk or treat because that's like part of the way that these kids can like trick or treat and hang out with their friends. Yeah. And show off their costumes. And exactly. Everything. So but it's cool because I got like a fog machine all set. And we're doing a Ghostbusters theme in our in our car. But uh, that's awesome. But you know what? It's not the same. And to be honest, I wouldn't if if this neighborhood was was like hopping with kids, I would be like spending all my energy making this house out to be something great. But it's just quiet. And I could I'll put a bowl of candy out and the raccoons will probably get it before the kids do. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, Ryan, what are your plans? My plans, I will probably <laughs> end up taking the kids over to my dad's old neighborhood. Yeah. Uh, you know, might as well. And I tell you what, a lot of those people get into it over there. They they do some of the big elaborate setups. They have yeah. walkthroughs in their backyards oh, yeah. and garages and all kinds of stuff. And oh, you remind me of a story. They got some really cool things going on over there. You know, I, I, this reminds me of a story, though, of uh, way back in the day when Jared and I were in church together. You know, the trick or treat kind of made me think of this. Do you remember the haunted house they did at the the church we used to go at to St. back in Paul? the day? Yeah, St. Paul. They did a haunted house in their fellowship hall and, I, I, in the I classrooms. Have, I have no memory of this. Oh, okay. So... They did this is late seventies, very early eighties. I couldn't have been more than I was probably like I was probably five or six. And we're going through and 
I'm I'm pretty good, you know. I'm feeling pretty good about it. And then <laughs> feeling pretty good about it. You know, and then I'm not scared or anything. And we go to this room and there's like this mad scientist doctor who has this giant <laughs> syringe in his hand and he's just looks, you know, menacing. And I think I'd just gone and had some, <laughs> you know, a checkup and had shots done or something. And I was terrified of that. <laughs> and <laughs> I'd eaten some beef stew earlier that night. <laughs> oh, what? <laughs> and uh, to this day, I do not eat beef stew. To this <laughs> day. And I just totally chucked it all right there in the <laughs> at the church. That's Completely amazing. Completely disgusting. Because you saw this guy with a syringe. Yeah, it was terrifying at that age. Seeing I mean, this mad scientist doctor with a giant syringe in his hand about to stick somebody. There's an was it a person dressed up like that? Yeah, it was somebody dressed up like a doctor. There's an old man right now <clears throat> still telling his neighbors and his grandkids about the one kid he scared so bad he puked. <laughs> yes. And it's like it's all it's like one of the highlights of his life. Well, yep. Which, you know, while Brian was telling that story, it reminded me of another story. I don't know if he'll remember this. Uh, my mom, the, like there was a big mall in Knoxville at the time, East town mall. Oh, it was, yes, it was gigantic. Mall. One of the biggest in the Southeast. And, um, it's since been completely demolished, but in those days it was a thriving place and they had, they were advertising this haunted house that, uh, you know, all the proceeds were going to the police department or something. And so my mom was like, oh, well that could be fun. I'll take. I'm going to take, uh, I, were you with us, Brian? I went to that once. I don't know if but, it was with you, but we, the, th but the reason I, I, I know what you're talking up, about, the reason I bring it up with you is because your sister also named Terry was with us. My sister, Julie and Brian's sister, Terry were also good. Friends I was probably Brian. with you then. I just, okay. You know, well, I remember we, going, we went into this thing and it was, it, it was a, like a charnel house. It was like a taking a five-year-old to like a Blumhouse <laughs> horror movie. Oh yeah. It, it, there were like decapitated heads inside of refrigerators and people chasing you with chainsaws. Oh, man. And, and we were, Wait, what year was this? This was like a, probably, I was probably 10 or 11. 10, wow. Yeah. Oh, that's right ambitious. That that's amazing. That's pretty cool. Mid eighties. And Brian's sister, terry melted down so completely like <laughs> she just I, I i remember her just sort of falling onto the floor and not and we're like we're you know not refusing to move like and just screaming <laughs> and i do believe if i'm remembering correctly they had to escort us out yeah like she was so <laughs> upset wow and my mom felt terrible and she was like oh what is this this how could they show that to children <laughs> do that for children it's the police department they should know better <laughs> and it, but it was it, it was some of the most horrific things I, I had ever seen up to that point probably <laughs> but um yeah the the good old haunted houses um they're also uh, of course a staple this time of year especially down here in florida we've got the all the big theme parks do you know, Halloween horror nights, uh, at universal and, um, Hallow scream at Tampa at, uh, Bush gardens in Tampa. And those are all very extremely popular. Yeah. I did the Hallow scream at Bush gardens, but I never did the universal studios one. I hear the universals better. Yeah. It's, it's, uh, it's really something else. And if I, if I had a, you know, I, I th I've thought about going a couple of times with some buddies, but um, it's also expensive and very crowded. Yeah. So, um, but, you know, it is this this is stuff. Definitely. That kind of thing was not around when we were, you know, we we mm -hmm. types, you know, I go into a shop now. I mean, of course, they have spirit. Halloween is infamous for taking over, you know, abandoned buildings sure, of course. <laughs> and <laughs> and putting their, their wares inside yeah. of these places. Right. Um, and you go in those places now and it is, I mean, it's, it's like something uh, like a 10 year old me would could never have imagined like 
fully animatronic mannequins that they're selling that talk and you know uh, all this you know stuff from every conceivable horror film you can imagine Mm -hmm. and the the costumes while look great but they're they're very cheaply made but they they look pretty solid you know i I remember going in there a couple years ago and putting on a a johnny lawrence cobra kai jacket (laughs) uh just like he wore in the karate kid and it was pretty awesome but these stores i mean especially if you're into halloween or anything like that it's just it's just amazing And, and if crazily enough still exist in the 25th century because there are a lot of abandoned warehouses they pop up don't they <laughs> spirit halloween is still doing business in the 25th century <laughs> I, with all these abandoned places around us i bet those costumes hold up better than a ben cooper costume <laughs> yeah <laughs> yes they probably those things, do by the time you got done trick-or-treating were they were just destroyed well the well, elastic I'll, would snap on the the thing and you never yeah, or they right. would tear the vinyl would tear yeah yes but I tell yeah. you, you go and you look at some of the, the costumes they have now, which a lot of them are in those bags. You know, they the, they hang them. And it, sometimes it's like flipping through a penthouse magazine, quite frankly, yeah. the costumes oh. that they're selling. <laughs> and I'm some like, of it's just like a little piece of cloth. Yeah. I'm like, excuse me, honey, I'm going to go look at these Ghostbusters costumes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so. So, you know, yeah, it's a little bra that says Vinkman on it, you know? <laughs> <laughs> yes, of course. Yeah. So check this out. How cool is this? So about an hour and a half away from where I live is the town of Sleepy Hollow. Oh, oh yeah. That's cool. So they do some cool stuff, don't they? And so it's like I, I've been, you know, my, my kids, my, my oldest is seven years old and he's just, he's just now kind of getting into like the spooky stuff. So I think maybe between now and next year, I'll be able to like really work some stuff in on him and like, kind of like the legend of sleepy hollow and all that kind of garbage and really like expose him to that kind of stuff because it's sleepy hollow at Halloween. It's like, it's huge. I mean, it's no shock that that's there. Mardi Gras. I could, I could imagine. And um, you can go over the bridge that Ichabod crane reportedly went over. And uh, you know, you can take the whole walking tour the Halloween walking tour of Sleepy Hollow and uh, and see the sights and all that stuff. And it's a real historic kind of thing. And it's old New York too. So it's just, it's just uh, kind of like North of Manhattan. And it's like Dude. old, it's like old, old New York and uh, old world America. And, uh, and then they incorporate all the spooky fun stuff. So I'm like, that's what I want to do. I want to take my kids to something like that and let them fall in love with that kind of real part of like, cause they, you know, what's so cool about like the United States is that, you know, Europe has a lot of like old kind of like the vampires and the werewolves and it's very old world. Right. But you know, the people don't realize that the United States has a lot of very cool, like its own mythos about like scary stuff and its own stuff, its own Bigfoot, its own, this, its own, that. And like sleepy hollow is ours, right? That's our piece of like a scary, a scary stuff. Right. So like, that's the kind of stuff I want my kids to like really learn and get, get in on and, and have fun with that kind of stuff because there's like some really neat stuff and there's some pretty cool stuff to scare the heck out of them. That do they, do they have, I mean, I'm, I'm sure they do. Is there a headless horseman that rides around? On I'm sure there is. I'm sure there, there has to be, be so cool. Several of them <laughs> riding around, but uh, it'd be, I think that'd be awesome. They take them to sleepy hollow. Cause I passed it once we were going, you know, we we're going somewhere. I'm like, sleepy hollow, sleepy hollow. And shamefully, my wife said, what's that? I'm like, oh, <laughs> So I realized that my my job yeah, is gotta, much bigger than, oh, I, than I thought it was going to be. You have to educate everybody out here about what's right. going on. But I, you know, it's it's the 25th century training school is what it is. I'm getting uh, I getting my my chops on to teach. Yeah. All right. Well, you know, Matt. Yes. Since uh, you need to go back in time to tell your wife and kids more about Sleepy Hollow, we need to get Brian <laughs> back to his spot. Uh, his rifle spot in the 21st century before he's missed. It's true. And uh, we need to wrap it up because it is Halloween, everyone. And we want you to go out there and have a good time and do whatever you do. You know, do it old school, do it new school. Just, you know, don't go to a mall and trick or treat for the love of mercy. (laughs) So 
we're going to be signing off here now with the hyperspace. We hope you have a happy Halloween. And we're going to be back here much sooner than you think. We've still got some Cassie and Chronicles to knock out and a whole lot more coming at you in season six. So again, happy Halloween, and we'll see you next time. You know you can't live without this content. So subscribe to the Hyperspace, podcasting in the 25th century. Follow us on social media, leave us a review, and join us next time as we take you into the 25th century.